In life's journey, we must seek to reflect, learn, and grow. Welcome to the Road to Rediscovery with your host, Aubrey Johnson. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another exciting episode of the Road to Rediscovery. I'm your host, Aubrey Johnson, and I'm so glad you're on this road with me. The Road to Rediscovery is about reflecting on life lessons to learn and grow from them and to take it to the next level and help others who are struggling through dark times. You know, life in general has been referenced by many different metaphors, right? I mean, it's been referenced uh, as a book with chapters. Uh, uh, this very show, we reference life to a road or a journey. You know, uh, however you view your life, it's undeniable that there are parts of our lives that define our seasons, right? Such as your childhood or your college years, maybe early parenthood and career. These seasons present us with exciting and challenging events and connects us with others who come and go and those who fortunately stick around for lifelong relationships. All of these variables combined brings us to who we are today. My special guest has forged an amazing journey leading to who he is today. He's an actor, a writer, having appeared on such TV shows as George Lopez, That 70s Show, and Miami Vice, among many others. His voice has been featured on South Park and The Simpsons and a lot more. You also know him from such classics as Up in Smoke, Still Smoking, and Nice Dreams. He's one half of a duo that has pioneered a timeless presence in pop culture and comedy. That duo is Cheech and Chong, and it gives me great pleasure to welcome Mr. Tommy Chong to the show. Hey, Tommy, how are you, man? Welcome to the show. Well, thank you, and thank you for that beautiful introduction. That's one of the nicest ones I've had. I really like that. That's very oh, nice. Thank oh, you. No, absolutely, absolutely. We reciprocate, man. I want to thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to come talk with us here and to 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 learn a little bit more about your journey, man. So, um, so so let me get this straight. From what I understand, um, your life journey has uh, begun in uh, in Canada, uh, from from Calgary. Alberta, yep. thereabouts. Yep, Calgary, Alberta, Canada. That's where I was uh, raised. Nice. I was born. I was born in Edmonton. Okay. And and moved around, but uh, we ended up in Calgary. Gotcha, yeah. gotcha. Yeah, um, I spent a lot of time up in Vancouver um, for professional reasons, um, just extended business travel and stay, and it's just absolutely beautiful in that area, man. It, was was it a girl? Oh no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, it wasn't a girl. <laughs> I wish it was at that time. I was single, you know, no kids yeah. at that time or anything. And, but, and, uh, and you went to Vancouver and you never scored? I know, right? I mean, I, mean I got close. I got close. I was there for three months, man. You would have oh, thought, my. right? And, 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 and <laughs> well, you'll have to turn your black card in i'm sorry oh come on man <laughs> no no i'm sorry I'm sorry you just no redo you, oh i'm already married okay <laughs> oh yeah no <laughs> no this vancouver was noted you know the the base of woodby island was close by vancouver yeah. and so the brothers used to go to vancouver every chance they got because mm -hmm. vancouver was a happening happening nightclub uh, that's where that's where I got started. That's where I met Chiefs. That's where we all where it all began was in Vancouver. <laughs> Forget oh, man. Calgary, man. <laughs> we, got, we, <laughs> we got kicked out of Calgary. We got asked to leave. Uh -huh. and, but, but Vancouver, man, Vancouver, it's still my home. I still got a home there. Oh, you do? So, yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. Man, I had a blast there. Now, uh, uh, not that I'm trying to make excuses, okay, but... Um, I was there for business. They worked me like a dog, but I had my nights and weekends. Uh, some of the guys that I hung out with from work uh, out on the town in Vancouver, I don't yeah. know. I think they put, I think they put the fear, the fear of God in me, man. They said, uh, no, nah, I don't approach any of these women. Uh, some of them are undercover cops and stuff like that. Oh, kind of they scared you that way. Oh. Yeah, I'm like, come on, man. You know, yeah, you're 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 in you were in the wrong set, man. That's all. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I think so set. too. No, I think so too. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you never had some young lady come up, tug you, and pull you away and say, 
come here. I'm going to talk to you alone. No, you never that, had was, that? that was in Mexico, man. <laughs> long okay. story oh, but okay. for there another conversation go. but but yeah. yeah that was in mexico for sure man uh just outside of brownsville so <laughs> yep. yeah 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 for yeah. sure so so what got you in entertainment man i mean uh what how did you dabble in it in the industry first uh, was it music I heard. it was uh yeah it was totally rock and roll actually yeah. uh, elvis elvis got me going because when elvis appeared in 19 19- 54 i was mm-hmm. in high school mm-hmm. and uh i had a buddy who was also a singer and, and full-blood native uh Sarsi native uh mm-hmm. from from calgary mm-hmm. he, he he became the first uh, elvis impersonator <clears throat> like oh, really? uh, even though elvis was just starting out uh dick uh, uh burn he 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 copied him uh, the songs, the look, you know. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, Dick mm-hmm. had a bad complexion, but he had that great hair. He pulled his hair in a duck tail and he put his collar up and had a white sports jacket and he went <laughs> up and sh- shook his hips. And mm-hmm. and I was a backup guitar player because I used to back up uh, Dick and, you know, various things. And yeah. and he needed a backup guitar player. And, and so I got on stage with Dick at, in uh, Western Canada High School in mm-hmm. Calgary. Mm-hmm. And that was my debut of uh, playing in front of uh, kids, you know, young kids. Nice. And that's how it got started. And then I put a band together eventually. I mean, I was part of a band. Mm-hmm. And, and, and the singer was a, a very well-liked, well-known black uh, running back for mm-hmm. uh, a semi-pro team called the, the Bronx. Mm-hmm. And it, his name was Tommy Milton. And Tommy was this beautiful, oh, the most beautiful, uh, well-built, gorgeous athlete you could mm-hmm. ever meet. Mm-hmm. And uh, he was a singer. Mm. And so in Calgary or in Canada, they had a rule. If you were a black, you were automatically a singer. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. No matter whether you could or not. Okay, you picked up that credential. Yeah, <laughs> most of them couldn't, but I mean yeah. that that was an and we helped start that that thing because mm-hmm. our band was called the Shades because the native and Tommy and I we were all different shades. Yeah, and so we called ourselves uh, the Shades, and yes. and then it turned into the Shades uh, Blues Band. Yeah, and, and, but we also played jazz too, and yeah. so. Uh, you know, I and and I got I got a love affair with jazz very early, mm. and so all, all my life I've uh, I've always been a jazz fan. Beautiful. And in fact, that's really my religion. You know, the jazz. Yeah. I went to I went to, to the school of John Coltrane. You know. There you go. And, there you go. And yeah. Miles and Miles Davis. You know that. 100%. I still I still go to that church. Oh, do you? And then <laughs> and then the, the piano player uh, Bernie. Mm-hmm. He was another gorgeous black man that played semi-pro football. Yeah, uh, no, yeah, semi-pro, and he was more. He was also a running back, mm-hmm. built like a, an Adonis, like a god. Yeah, you know, yeah. and he was a weightlifter and a bodybuilder mm-hmm. and a karate expert. Mm-hmm. And, and so we had a gorgeous band. I mean, and my brother he played yeah. bass. Yeah. Uh, and my, I played guitar mm-hmm. and, mm-hmm. and then we had a white guy on drums for a while. And then we finally found the right brother. And, uh, yeah. but we got so good and we started our own team club in Calgary, mm-hmm. but we got so good that the mayor in the city chief of police asked us to leave town. <laughs> oh no, come on. <laughs> <laughs> we got run out of town. <laughs> To tour, though, though, right? Hmm? to tour though right to tour though right no to tour no, no. It was a like, get the hell out of town <laughs> <laughs> because we were we, we the dancers were so popular yeah. we attracted the the roughest crowd in a you can imagine there's nothing to do in calgary yeah and yeah so every every hoodlum <laughs> every bad actor in the world was at the dance blown off steam the girls the girls came and where the girls are that's where the boys are that's right and, and so, so the dances ended too soon. If we mm-hmm. if we were allowed to play all night, we'd have been okay. But we had to stop at like midnight. I guess. And you. so that left a whole bunch of 
unfulfilled uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. urges. And so Calgary became a hotbed of, uh, of sort of like party crashing and mm -hmm. crime and all sorts mm -hmm. of stuff. And so the chief of police, the mayor, and the, I guess the city attorney, they were all there and they asked us to leave town. Oh my and, goodness. And we, with us, it was like, yeah, let's go. <laughs> 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 and so we went to Vancouver and, uh -huh. and then we, and then we stayed there over the years, you know, and oh, that's gosh. where I met Cheech too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Eventually I, I, uh, I ended up, I, I, I ended up going to Motown. We got discovered in Vancouver and we went to Motown. Wow. And our claim to fame was that we discovered the Jackson Five. That was oh, our okay. claim. Yeah. That was our big claim to fame. <laughs> and then, uh, and then, uh, you know, I needed a green card to work in the States. And so right. when I applied for a green card, I got fired from Motown because <laughs> the road manager didn't know what a green card was. Oh, uh, okay. And when once I got fired, I told, and Barry called me up. Barry Gordy said, no, no, you're not fired. I said, but yeah, I think I, I'll stay fired because I want to be a Barry Gordy. I don't want to work for one. Right. And he said, yeah, and he was nice. He said, yeah, I, I really appreciate it. You know, he said, I, I can dig that. Yeah. So he gave me a nice uh, severance pay and nice. I went to Vancouver and then I, uh, no, I went to uh, LA first and then I okay. uh, w made it up to Vancouver and, and that's where I met Cheech. Mm -hmm. And I, I had converted, we had, by that time, we had two nightclubs and I had one, mm -hmm. one was a strip club and I turned the strip club into a, a improvisational theater. Beautiful. Yes. And uh, that's where I met Cheech. And then when the mm -hmm. theater broke up, when we quit, <laughs> we were losing money. Uh, uh -huh. Then Cheech, Cheech and I stayed together. And then we had to sneak back into the States, at least Cheech did. Yeah. Because he was a draft dodger. And so we ended up sneak it back and becoming uh, discovered and uh, you know and, and then we met Lou Adler and did a record and mm -hmm. the rest is history wow man that is Tommy that is amazing I mean uh, with the band and everything um, first off very colorful band <laughs> um, yeah. you know a lot of a lot of eth ethnicis ethnicis I can never say that word ethnicities um, yeah. you know a melting pot you know um yep. you know uh also during a time where i mean motown man i mean yeah. they were at the height of of their of their notoriety their popularity They're very very top very top. Yeah, yeah the very top you know and uh yeah. i mean the marvelettes and smoky robinson well, and marvin Mo Gaye, Mo motown I mean, motown got a little bigger with the jackson five yes that, you know but 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 michael when mike yeah but marvin gay yeah, yeah that was a big influencer and smoky and, yeah, and, yeah yeah i heard smoky the smoky's uh my girl that yeah. tune mm -hmm. oh man it's always been my favorite tune it's and, beautiful uh, before i met smoky and you know mm -hmm. the temps and then we ended up playing with the temps we had nice. David Ruffin. David Ruffin, when he got kicked out of the Temps, he yeah. would follow our, our band, Bobby Taylor in Vancouver's. He'd follow yeah. us around and sit in and, oh, and, nice. sing, and sing My Girl. What a treat. Oh, what oh, a man. treat. Yeah, the fans oh. didn't know what hit them. They got yeah. <laughs> the audience, oh, right? <laughs> oh, the, you know, the audience was so jaded. They were so jaded. They got all this great entertainment, but it was all yeah. black. You know the Fox Theater in yes. in, uh, yes. in uh, Detroit. In Detroit, I've been there. Yeah, yep. yeah, the Fox in or mm -hmm. in Saint. Oh, all of Saint Louis, uh, all all that Cleveland. Yeah, all the theaters, man. Oh, we gonna, did the chit. I played uh, the Chitlin Circuit, man. That was, I learned so much. Oh, really? Oh, oh, man. In fact, one time, one time in uh, the Chitlin Circuit mm. in, in the South. Where were we? We were in South Carolina mm -hmm. and we we're going to play a gig. And these little, when you pulled up to the stage, all these little black kids would be waiting for you so yeah. they could carry your instrument. And then you give them a few you. bucks, you know, yeah. can I carry yeah. a guitar? Uh -huh. and, and so, so I asked him, I said, are you guys going to see the show? And he said, oh no, we're not allowed. And I said, what? And they said, oh no, 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 it's white only. 
Mm -hmm. I said, what? This is Smokey and Diana Ross and Bobby Taylor. Big names. So, yeah. So I, w I went to the to the uh, manager. Yeah. And I said, I said, is that true? And they said, uh, well, yeah. He says, but we have areas, you know. And I said, no, that's bullshit, man. Mm. <laughs> and and, and uh, I didn't have to say much more than that. Good. Because it was at that time where you couldn't get away with that shit. Right, and right. So they, so, so uh, that night there were black people in the front row. So, so wow, yeah, I, it had a little effect. Tommy, but, that's huge, man. That, that's yeah. huge. You know, yeah. and, and I was, I was, uh, I was, I was going to ask you about, you know, having this melting pot of of a band, you know, with the Vancouver's and, um, and 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 being of mixed race, you know. Uh, what were some of the struggles as far as getting a gig or getting into a place, or, um, you know, that, that you had during that time? I mean, music was like, I mean, it was, it was reaching the apex, you know, yeah. um, you know, I mean, great, great groups, you know, and, and, and so competition was stiff, I'm sure, you know? Sure. Well, you, you, you know what you had to have. And that's why the better looking you were, the more, you know, the more sexy you were, the better chance you had of making it. The, the secret to any entertainer has always been the woman. Yes. Oh. The woman that will support you, that will pay your bills, that mm -hmm. will help you through all the bad times, that yeah. will turn their back when, yeah. when they see the hanky panky <laughs> going on. <laughs> right, right. But you never you know if you were halfway decent looking mm -hmm. and had a had a had a, a rap you know had your your talk together yeah uh, you you were comfortable in fact a lot of times it it worked to be d detrimental to the artist because so many artists missed out on the big uh, the big uh, stardom because yeah. of their uh, because they got sidelined gotcha. they became they became pimps instead of becoming, uh, you know, what they were, you know, right. singing, singers, yeah. you know, they always had that side gig and that's what kept a lot of them from, you know, going all the way, right, right up to the top, you know, mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. and, and, but I lived through all that, man. That was <laughs> my life, my life, man. Yeah. <laughs> and you talk about, but, uh, but a, a bull in a in, in the in the right crowd. Right. <laughs> now take me. Now I, I I had a thing for black girls. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And so so that did not hurt our situation at all. Oh yeah. well, of course not. No, uh, far from it. You know. I mean, that, in fact, that's no, a feather in your cap. <laughs> because you had to have your shit together because these black ladies, the hot ones, yeah, you know, they, 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 I mean, they were, they had a, their, their yeah. rules. You had to. Oh yeah. They had high standard, you know? Yeah. High standard. You had to hit every yeah. note. Yep. Yep. They spot a phony a mile away. Be, <laughs> then you had to be cool because you know, they don't, they, <laughs> I was I was lucky though. I, I got married to my, my childhood sweetheart, mm, Maxine. Mm -hmm. And then and then I met uh my now wife now. Mm -hmm. In fact, mm -hmm. I, I joke all the time on stage, I say I got so black I even married a white woman. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Oh man, I I love that, uh, Tommy. <laughs> that that man, that's a that's a good one. Uh, yeah, yeah so, I have the best time. But I'll tell you, yeah. you know, I had a, I, we had a change. You know, mm -hmm. all this mm -hmm. all this uh, Black Lives Matter and and, yeah. and George Floyd and all that. Man, mm -hmm. it changed our show. Changed my show. You oh, know, yeah. I used yeah. to do a character called Blind Melon Chidlam. and he was uh, on record and, mm -hmm. and everything, mm -hmm. and it was you know. It was actually a good, uh, good depiction of a, of a, the old black uh, blues. Yeah, singer. yeah, yeah. But, but in this day and age, man, you know, I had a blind had to be retired. You know, I put yeah, him off the pasture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it's a different it, world. It ain't, it ain't flying. That that yeah. that dog ain't hunting anymore. You know, so no. so I uh, and it was you know it was. Uh, uh, Herbie Hancock 
you know, the great my jazz players. Yep. He yep. he was the one that 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 got me to quit doing blind because oh, he told he? me he yeah he he saw the show and he said you know man when you get playing like you're there you're there and it's so cool mm-hmm. and then you mm-hmm. do that other shit. <laughs> <laughs> that's what he said oh man yeah and you knew exactly what he was talking about <laughs> oh exactly and then I just, yeah because it was a compliment you're there you're there yeah. playing you know music uh-huh, and then uh-huh. I, then he said then you do that other shit <laughs> and, and, it, and it, i looked at him and i said he's right he's uh-huh. right you know because there was a time when that was acceptable right, right. that time's gone that, that time time's gone gone no. yeah no yeah. more. No more. No. no. It's nope. a different world, man. It's a different it world. Is, yeah. It, it's evolved. It's an evolved yeah. world. Yeah. Now and I can. You, mm-hmm. you know what? The good part is that now I don't have to hide behind the character. No. You see. Now the real soul, the real Tommy Chong soul, is going to come out. You know, I don't yes. have to hide, pretend I'm anything. No. I just no. have to be me. You 100%. see. So, so it's a it's a freedom. You you get freed. You, you know. You, the shackles are off the mask is off you don't right. need that bullshit you know yeah. that's what herbie was trying to tell me you know is yeah. then you do that other shit no, i don't <laughs> need to do that other shit <laughs> right right and and I, and I thank you herbie because so, uh-huh yeah. so so uh over the years um it seems like now you've opened yourself up to who you are okay there's no front there's, I mean, you know, what you see is what you get, and yep. you could truly be yourself now. Um, I guess it's a combination of things, right? I mean, as we get older, we, uh, we're also, you know, get uh, pretty, you know, we accept who we are, and we're, you know, we become more unapologetic about it, and, and it's like, hey, this is me, you know? At the same time, uh, and I want to talk about this, there's several things that um, has evolved in the world um, especially when it can, when it comes to the use of um, the use of marijuana and cannabis and things like that, um, you know, for people with PTSD or chronic body problems and everything, where you know it's it, it's not a taboo thing. It's uh, it, it's something that people are talking about. You know, um, I, I want to get into that, and I'll get into that in a, in a minute, Tommy. Um, I, I just wanted to um, to quick quickly ask you. Um, uh, when it came to the characters that you played um, in different shows, um, like like playing a hippie character, um, you know, as an actor, did uh, did did you feel any kind of um, hangups or thoughts of being pigeonholed or typecast, or or was that something that you embraced? You know, um, you know, playing whatever role that you were given, um, you know, uh, during during you know each project. Well, you know, when when teaching on the road, we, you know, we did all the different characters. We did yeah, different yeah. characters. Yeah, yeah. When it came down to doing the movie, uh, Lou Adler, our, the, the the director and the you know the guy that owned the, owned the old records that are yeah. comedy records, uh-huh. he he was kind of hoping that we'd do a, a Cheech and Chong's greatest hits. Yes, you yes. know. And just do the record bits and mm-hmm. somehow, you know, put them on, on on the camera. We tried, but Cheech and I got together. I wrote a song called Up in Smoke. Mm-hmm. And when Cheech heard that song, he says, Well, that's the title of the movie. <laughs> nice. And then then once once we had the title, mm-hmm. then we had to write the story. And I wrote most of the story and I realized that Cheech and I, the reason we got together was to 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 do music originally. Yeah. Right, but right. we did we did comedy and we never did get around to playing music. But our original intent was to play music, mm. and so uh, when when uh, we started playing doing up in smoke, that's when Cheech says, you know, uh, you know, you will be you know we'll be Pedro and Man. That was the mm. character we did uh, mm-hmm. uh, on stage. Yeah, and yeah. and then what I realized with Man my character was that he was the hippie is like the white version of the of a black man you know? <laughs> yeah, right you know he, he's down and out and you know people don't want him in their stores you know <laughs> people 
follow him around if he's shopping. They <laughs> follow him around. <laughs> yeah, you know, like what do you want right yeah, away? Yeah. And uh, you know, you're, you're, yeah. and that's what that's what the long hair. You know, we were mm-hmm. rebels. Yeah. And yeah. then and Cheech's character, the the Chicano. Uh, everybody in movies and that always had him as a scary guy, you know, a guy with a gun, the guy with a knife, a mm. pachuco that would, uh, yeah. you know, kill for for next. No, no th- those guys existed. Right. But the guy that Cheech loved to play was this wannabe. He was like a yeah. wannabe gangster. Yeah, yeah. And he was just he was just <laughs> out for the girls, the girls, and, and to get high, and uh-huh. and to sing and to play music. Yeah. He was a, like a true true musician. So when we got <laughs> together, so then when I got kind of typecast to that, I loved it. I nice. loved it. Very nice. And yes. so so because now, I, I get to play all those great hippie roles. You yeah. Know? <laughs> you know, right, right. Like in, like in, uh, uh, you know, uh, that '70s show. Yeah. You know, like I, I played this old hippie that never, mm-hmm. you know, that had a background, and, and but he was like a legitimate old hippie, and yeah. it's very close to who I really am. Not a stretch. You know? Not a stretch. <laughs> no, and, and and I also realized, you know, because I, I know there's actors that are just actors, right. you know, uh, right. uh, that are just, you know, they. They, they'll eat up a character and, and i've yeah. met quite a few worked with with quite a few sure you know uh, yeah. like uh, like john voight he he's a he's a guy now he's he he's a trump supporter and he's all that but he he got caught in a character that i you know this is my thing you know because john voight is <laughs> good old white boy yeah right <laughs> you know I, I i was i was at a, a celebrity game one time and Mm-hmm. And, and Jim Brown was going up for a layup, yeah. and, and and John Voigt came behind him, smacked the ball out of his hand, smacked uh, Jim on the in, in the head, and oh and I, and and just kept kept playing. And I looked at Jim Brown, and Jim Brown was everything he could do to control. Oh, <laughs> control, I bet, I bet, <laughs> killing that, killing that white boy. Yeah, yeah. But then I realized, man, you know, that's who John Boyd is. Yes. Yeah. You know, like that's yep. who Jim Brown is. That's yep. who John Boyd is. Yep. And and so so acting, uh, you know, you look at these guys, you'll find that they're you know they're they're very close to that character that they can play. Right. I guess. You, you know. Yeah. 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 And, and with me, and Cheech both. Now mm-hmm. Cheech doesn't do that character. Right. You know, and, and Nash Bridges, like Cheech, Cheech, you know, Cheech wanted to be a cop. His dad right. was a cop. Okay. His dad was a cop. And so Cheech is really carrying on that tradition, right. you know, of, of being a cop. Mm-hmm. Uh, me, on the other hand, I love that hippie. Awesome. <laughs> and, awesome. Uh, and that's who I'm going to be till the day I die. Man, you, I mean, it's, I mean, I, I don't know. Every time I think of Tommy Chong, uh, I think... <laughs> And I'm sure you've heard this many times, Maui Wowie, man. <laughs> you know, yeah. And, yeah. So uh, I, I love you know, your characters. You know, you know, my favorite Tommy Chong bit is that uh, when, when in with Nice Dreams, where the cop says that you can go now. Yeah. <laughs> and I go, hold on, man. You just can't let us go like that. I know my rights. <laughs> <laughs> hey, oh no, man! Like, oh man! I was, I was so ready. I was so ready to, to start fighting for my rights that that I I, I, I forgot that he's oh, letting man. us go. Man. <laughs> no, man, I, that's hilarious. You know that character. Man. That character came from a, a a kid I met in Vancouver. Yeah, uh, we had we just turned the club in the strip club into a into a, uh, a, a improvisational club, and I had. Yeah the bank of lights and mm-hmm. uh, in the doors and it was a pure uh, it was like a house you know yeah, a home yeah. the club it was a nightclub mm-hmm. and so i met i'm walking down eighth avenue and there's a garbage strike on so there's bags of garbage piled up all over mm-hmm. and here's this kid with long red hair sitting on the bag of garbage and the snow is kind of he's under a street light and the snow is kind of falling on his head he looked like 
those snow angels, you know, where the ball yeah. where you shake. Yeah. He looked like a, a snow angel sitting there. Mm-hmm. And and I had to say, what? Uh, now, who are you? Yeah. He says, I'm, and he says, I'm strawberry, man. <laughs> you said it like that. <laughs> and I said, strawberry? <laughs> he said, hey man, do you know? Do you have a place where I can crash? <laughs> and I said, you know, as a matter of fact, I do. <laughs> he said, oh, that's groovy, man. <laughs> Love it, man. Love he it. didn't even ask where it was. No. And so, so I, I took him down to the to the uh, to the nightclub we nice. had, and and. Strawberry spent the, a few nights in the light mm-hmm. booth, and oh and, really? And, and since he's in the light booth, mm-hmm. then we had him do the lights, right? And he was so funny doing lights because he had to do. He, he would be a little slow in the uptake, you know. We'd say yeah, we need yeah. a blackout, and and yeah. Cheech would be all, po- po- you know, like frozen into his thing. Strawberry, uh, strawberry, <laughs> blackout, <laughs> strawberry. <laughs> and then, then if, uh, if we did, we try, we experiment all the time with a bit. Yeah. And if a bit yeah. didn't go over very good, uh-huh. we'd go backstage and Strawberry would say, "Oh man, that bit really sucked, man." <laughs> <laughs> Talk about inspiration for the character, uh, man. I love and, it. And so when I did the character, I mean, I just crawled into Strawberry, and you know what? I met him. Just a few years ago, yeah, and he changed. Oh, wow. He changed. Short yeah. hair, really. Business suit, business uh-uh. shoes, big thick brogans, really. Uh, no, a, a, a grown older man, like like me. I I haven't yeah. grown. I, you know, I, I haven't I'm grown. <laughs> you know, I haven't. Yeah, yeah. Matured. Yeah. He matured right out of. He, and he, he, his, his voice, everything is different. Like his journey took a turn, man. His journey. Well, yeah, he, he yeah. grew up. He grew yeah. up. He yeah. went from that, that homeless hippie. Yeah. And then he grew into this man. Like a, he could be a banker or, or sure. some kind of, uh, yeah, they change. Yeah. They change. Man. That's why I'm, I'm amazed, you know, that, that uh, I'm, uh, you know, Cheech and Cheech too. Neither. We, yeah. we, we both, we both. <laughs> are, are retarded you know <laughs> <laughs> oh no you, i mean it's the, it's the spirit of you and cheech i mean it's it's the spirit within you it's the spirit that cheech has that yeah. you know that, that's 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 part of that fire that allure you know of, of, yeah. of what's so appealing to you know your fans man and yeah. uh, and and i have to say i mean i want to i want to thank you for bringing the comedic side although i know the intention now was music but um, just the way the universe kind of unfolded things for you guys, man. Um, it, it just it just opened a whole new world of possibilities in the comedic part, right? So yeah, well, they, yeah. they let us. You know, uh, we 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 did our music. Yeah, we did as much music as 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 we 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 ever wanted to. You awesome. know, because even when I was in the band, you know, the mm-hmm. band that we had, mm-hmm. we laughed more than we played. We, oh, did we, you? we, oh man, because uh, you know, you know how yeah. that is with the brothers. Yeah. You know, oh yeah, you got these little things that you gotta, <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah, you, like your mama jokes. You yeah, know, oh, like, big time. Yeah, yeah. we put, but, uh, but 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 it's not. Mm-hmm. It, it's it, it's that 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 humor. Yes, and 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 that's that's oh, yes, that you, that that was so important, and and the jokes. Yeah, some of the jokes uh, that these jazz guys, you know, every jazz guy I know has a, a, a joke that that'll just knock you on your ass. Oh, it kills! And, it and, kills! And, yeah, yeah, and that's that's uh, that's where the humor was. And then you know, I, I got to know Red Fox pretty Love well. Love Red Fox. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But he, I got to know him. I was a musician. He knew me as a musician. Oh, did he? Okay. And, and, it, and he would come to our uh, after hours club. Right. And, right. and that's, where, that's where Diana Ross uh, mm-hmm. discovered us. Because mm. she came down and she heard, once she heard our group, yeah. she called Barry and Barry flew 
down to Vancouver. You know, he flew to see Diana Ross. Well, sure, Diana yeah, Ross. but <laughs> while he was there, <laughs> while he, then, was yeah. there he, he, he signed us. And uh, beautiful. And, and, and we never looked back since, you know. Yeah, man, that is that is awesome, Tommy. And hey, by the way, I'm a huge jazz fan myself. In fact, I, I've opened a jazz um, multimedia forum um, where I showcase jazz and stuff and interview jazz musicians. But um, what you were saying about the experience, right? Uh, part of the experience where you laugh more than you play and the yo mama jokes, uh, it, it kind of reminds me <laughs> of back in the day, um, you know, when I was uh, in high school, I, I played saxophone alto. And soprano oh, and there you go yeah okay. which which is awesome you know and uh and and so me and my buddies we had a little garage band you know never really got anywhere but we liked to play and um we had a, a drummer his name was kevin and yeah. uh kevin you know we we get started and and we would do covers right so uh, yeah. you, there there was a jazz tune back in the 70s called birdland I'm yeah. sure you heard. Yeah. And so, yeah, exactly. Yep. Yeah. We did Birdland, right? Birdland. Yeah. yeah. In Birdland. That's right. And so we would play, we would play, jamming, getting down. Then all of a sudden, Kevin would stop. He would stop drumming, you know? And we kind of stop. And then we all look at him with this, like, what the hell? Why'd you stop? And so he looks at us and he says, Oh, y'all keep going. I'll jump in. <laughs> We're like, what? You're the drummer. <laughs> you, it's the downbeat, the downbeat, you know? First hit, we can't go. You start, you know? <laughs> He'd always do that, you know? Yeah, but he needed attention. Yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, it's, uh, I had it, we had Bobby Taylor and I, we, we got, you know, Motown sent us to uh, England. To, oh, uh, really? to back up uh chris clark mm -hmm. and, and also you know like a little treat you know uh mm -hmm. and and so when we were there we got a gig in a in a little club called the speakeasy you know just for one oh, night yeah. oh yeah and, mm -hmm. and so we're we're playing there and all of a sudden the door and no one's up no one's in the in the club there's like nobody really uh and then the door opened and Jimi hendrix walks in oh, and nice. there's about Two three hundred people behind him, they like he's a pied piper, and he walked up to the stage and he said, "Hey Tom, mind if I sit in?" He's bringing and the whole I, show. <laughs> and, and 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 I I you know being a comedian, I said yeah. I had the urge to say uh, maybe next set maybe, <laughs> uh, <laughs> we got maybe some next. stuff we got to work out. You know, you know <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I had that in my mind. But then I said. Oh, of course. Yeah. And I took out my guitar and he goes, uh, no, I, I'll play bass because he's a left-handed guitar player. Right, right. And so we got Jimi Hendrix as a bass player and, and, and we're doing all of Bobby's tunes, you know, yeah. Yeah. Grapevine, all the covers, you know, the, yeah. heard it through the Grapevine and all the Bobby Taylor songs, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And Jimmy's, Jimmy, well, he was a band, you know, he played in a band yeah uh, for little richard all those guys you know yeah, yeah and so he so he's playing the hell out of the bass and the poor bass player because when Shown up. He, he, oh, he had to go sit down man. <laughs> yeah. and um, we're up there just wailing away with jimmy oh, and man. then 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 the then or well, they the club pulled the plug on us because we wouldn't stop playing and the guy everybody wanted to go home so they what? they pulled the plug on us and so we <sighs> went up to the hotel room and that's the sad part. Jimmy went into the bathroom, never came out. You know, he oh, just stayed man. in the bathroom. Oh, and man. you know what he was doing. Oh, yeah. And so oh, years yeah. later, years later, I, I do my impersonation of getting high with Jimmy Hendrix. Oh, do you? First, <laughs> first I, I do my impersonation of getting high with, uh, with um, uh, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Yeah. And, go, <laughs> and then... Uh, and <laughs> there you go. I love it. <laughs> and so, so for Jimmy, I go... And then I'd hand the joint down, down. <laughs> in the bathroom. Oh gosh, man, that's funny. I yeah, love we it. Had, we we had a time, and then the weirdest thing. Now this, mm -hmm. the, the, that's why I know that there's some weird shit going on with me, mm -hmm. because we're in the car, in the car, and we're on our way to the airport. Yeah, and the car is one of the limos that the Beatles used to ride in. So, oh, okay, yeah. so we're, we're riding in this Beatle limousine. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And all the band, you know, the guitar player and the drummer, everybody's talking about Jimi Hendrix. Mm-hmm. And I blurted out, I'm going to be bigger than Jimi Hendrix one day. And the everything got really quiet. <laughs> Real quiet. <laughs> and then the drummer, who, who he never had much respect for me, you know, like mm-hmm. drummers have. Yeah. He says, as a guitar player? And I said, no, no, not as a guitar player. I just had this epiphany. And then years later, uh, Cheech and I were playing in a club in Vancouver. Mm-hmm. And the same drummer, he was like almost like a stalker. <laughs> he was waiting, <laughs> waiting for us to finish the gig. And we're, yeah. walking to, we're walking to the car. And he goes, hey, you, know, you forget your old friends? Oh, and really? And, and, and it was Ted. And I wow. said, hey, Ted. I said, hey, Ted. And he says, yeah. Yeah, you just forget your old friends, do you? Then he walked away. Ooh. Oh, then, man, that's spooky. Yeah. <laughs> but he, but, but he, he died just, uh, what, uh, about a year ago, I, I guess. Oh, wow. He, it turns out he was adopted. Oh, was he? <laughs> and his adopted, his adopted parents, yeah. his, his dad was a, uh, a guard Mm -hmm. in a museum art museum Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and so i'm up there one day looking at the uh king tut uh exhibit and his dad come over to me and he starts telling me about ted Mm -hmm. i said what's what's wrong with ted you know it's his son yeah because his dad and mom used to drive ted to all these talent shows when he was 13 years old because he was such a great drummer yeah and so because he was so young they would drive him and ted Mm -hmm. would make sure he you know he got to it he, he Ted kind of ruled the roost, and then I found out that he was adopted, and that he was a half native kid. Oh wow! He was wow. half native, and so yeah. he had that because his dad, his dad at the art show called me mm. to a side, uh-huh. and he was he was kind of in tears. I said, "What's wrong?" And he <laughs> says, "Ted uh, ruined my table." I said, "What?" Well, he's a woodworker, and he made this coffee table. Mm-hmm. And he came home and Ted had chopped it up with an axe. Oh, no, you're kidding me. Ruin, yeah, that's ruining the table, all right. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> no, the scary part is what's he doing with an axe? Right, right. <laughs> and, if he did, and if he did that for the table, I mean, I, I'm sorry, but he, Ted, Ted, all his belongings would be on the sidebar. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. Same here, you know, that's too close but, for comfort. Yeah, <laughs> but he, but he, he he was so talented, Ted. Mm-hmm, he mm-hmm. was one of the best drummers. A- anybody that came to town, they always used Ted. You know, he was the oh, guy. Yeah. But it, but he had this ability to play loud. Gotcha. You know, yeah. so loud yeah. that it you you, you it, there's a lot of rage there. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. rather than uh, to yeah. tell him and you get more rage, we just ignored it. The band would we we just ignore that shit. You know, and then yeah. it would yeah. pass. You know, right, right. But but yeah. 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 Being a musician, you know, I, I played the, the secret was I always hired jazz musicians mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. because they're always available. Yes. And they always knew way more music than I did. Oh, and yeah. and they would always correct us, you know, if yeah. we're playing the wrong tempo or the wrong thing, you know, they would always put 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 it together. The original yeah. band that Barry Gordy saw uh, never played in Motown. <laughs> because no. the two we had a black uh, a piano player Leroy mm-hmm. and uh, Leroy Harris and we had a, a Freddie Freddie uh, forget his name Miller Freddie Miller on drums okay. uh-huh. well uh-huh. they're they're from Portland Oregon and so when we got the Motown contract they went home to Portland to tell mm-hmm. their friends you know tell them things and right. then when they tried to get back uh, the border wouldn't let them back, back because they oh, never had a man. work permit. Yeah. And, and not only that, they never had a work permit, but then they did a, a check on them. And, mm-hmm. and, and Freddie Miller had a, quite an extensive record. And oh. so he was barred from coming into Canada, period. And yeah, Leroy, you know, he was just with it. But, you know, that's the cold blood music business, man. Yeah. If the drummer drummer quits, there's another one. Yeah, <laughs> throw know? another one in, yeah. So, yeah, I mean... so, we, so we ended up getting Mal Brown <laughs> Was he was one of the best in in the world? He still is, uh, wow. and, and and 
And as soon as we got to Detroit with Mal, mm -hmm. now we had him. And then we used these uh, the white boys from Toronto, yeah, and, you know, as the uh, keyboards and that. And we yeah. had oh the best the be killer band. Nice. But as soon as uh, as soon as Diana Ross heard Mel Brown, she stole them. <laughs> she, she did. Stole Mel. <laughs> yeah, and and so then so then we ended up with the, the crazy Ted. The, yeah. The, 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 yeah, that's how we ended up with Ted. Yeah. <laughs> Oh man. So, um, uh, couple, couple more questions, then we'll go into three for the road. Now in the late seventies, early eighties, uh, around that time frame, um, I guess was like the release of up and smoke in 78 and still smoking in 83. And, and during this time, you know, uh, that was, that was in the midst of a major drug explosion right a craze um especially with uh, particularly cocaine smuggled coming into miami miami just uh, oh miami know, vice yeah scarface was released i mean you know and then yeah. during the reagan administration you had the war on drugs and all yep. this stuff so uh and, and and it's in the midst of this that you and cheech are making these movies up in smoke and still smoking i mean what was that what was that space like you know uh during well, that time think about it think about it the whole marijuana thing that that that's mexican that's chicano mm. that's cheech yeah you know yeah. that really is cheech yeah uh the hippie thing was the same thing the marijuana was, it was mine, <laughs> right you right know? i mean the hippie i mean the, yeah. i'll say yeah i don't care yeah i play drums in a band but i need to get high i need yeah yeah high, <laughs> you know <laughs> and uh -huh. so so you know at rehearsal and up and smoke let's let's go find our pot let's go get our pot you know? nice and that was the whole the whole thing yeah and then we when we get deported by mistake what do we have to bring back a, a band made a pot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we're looking for a pot and we're uh -huh. driving around in a band made a pot. So, oh my God. So we had, we it's had. Hilarious. So we owned. So, yeah. so what we did, we actually just showed everybody weed, said, okay, we own it. This yes. is ours. Right. This is ours. Uh -huh. No matter what uh -huh. you do from uh -huh. now on, everything will be compared to Cheech and Chong because that's it. And then, we're on Bill uh, O'Reilly's show, uh, yeah. and uh, and Bill is trying to diss us, you know. Yeah. And he's yeah. talking about the evil weed, and that. and I said to Bill, I says, Bill, what if we're right? What if they find that marijuana is good for you? Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. that it is a medicine. Mm -hmm. And Bill didn't have a comeback with that one. He just well, <laughs> hey, I, you know, yeah, you know yeah. he didn't know what to say. But wow. Cheech remembered that. Cheech reminded uh -huh. me of that that time when we said, "What if we're right?" And look at us. Almost we're prophetic, right. man. Yeah, we're right. We're one hundred percent right. One hundred percent right. right. Yeah. Churches are closed. Bars are closed. What's open? A pot shop. <laughs> totally. Totally. <laughs> Think yeah. about that, man. Yeah. Think about that. Yeah. You can't go to movies. You can't go to no. bars. You can't go to church. No. But you can go get your pot. You sure can. And man, ah, it. <laughs> it's 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 treating people. It's treating people. It's, it's relieving medicine. people from chronic body pain. It's yeah. helping people with PTSD. I mean, it's it's getting people off of medicine, right? Off, off of the synthetic bad medicine. Yeah, the yeah, bad the bad medicine, medicine, the opioids. Yeah. Look at look. I've been reading now, or watching TV, and now they they mm -hmm. got a. They're, they're finding the opioid makers billions of dollars. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, billions and billions of dollars, you know? Wow. And, and you know, so so when people say to me, oh, you, you went to jail for nine months for a bong? <laughs> 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 yeah, I did. Yes, that's right. <laughs> and uh, if I had to do it again, I'd do it again. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> because eventually, you know, eventually I'm going to do a, a I'm going to, sue the government to, to, to get my uh, record expunged mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. and to get the money that that i that they took from me yeah. uh back you know they mm -hmm. took a couple of hundred thousand dollars you know oh wow just for no reason you know other yeah. than they could you know yeah. they, they yeah. had me up on a drug charge and oh, it wasn't yeah. a drug charge and you know the deal was 
if I didn't plead guilty, they were going to go after my son and my wife mm -hmm. because they had no evidence on me. I was really innocent, even okay. though my name was Chong. Chong right. I had nothing to do with the, the internal operations of the, of the shop. Right, but right. my son did, and so did my wife. My wife wrote a check. I see. And all they wanted to do was just pressure me into saying I was guilty. Strong and they arm, did. Yeah. And they did. And I had mm -hmm. no problem with that at all. Mm -hmm. But now that we find out that it's, <laughs> it's, it's, that it's curing people, only, <laughs> it's, it's essential. Yes. Uh, yes. Now, I, I even got a plan to, to do it with the judge because I mm -hmm. want to go before the same judge mm -hmm. and then just reverse my plea. Yes. Withdraw my plea and then mm -hmm. plead not guilty because of additional evidence. Gotcha. And, and yeah. then I want to be found guilty. I don't want to be pardoned. I want to be found guilty. I mean, not guilty. Not guilty, right. And, and then I want to be able to uh, ask for my... Uh, you know, the bread I back, mean, man. Dude, 200 grand. <laughs> Got to get that bread back, man, for sure. Oh, okay, man. let's play the game. All right. So uh, here we go, man. We're going to go into uh, three for the road. I'm going to ask you three random yet thought provoking questions. Um, and I'm going to challenge you to kind of answer them in five words or less. So let's start with question number one. Question number one. Tommy, here we go. Red, I'm giving you a scenario, okay? Here's a scenario. Red, white, and green makes a historic splash. We're only in the early stages right now, but let's say they make a historic splash legalizing weed throughout the country. The president, President Biden, specifically taps you to serve a national role in advocating this, and you get to create your title. What would your title be? The most high. <laughs> I like it. The most high. That's three words. Perfect, man. Perfect. All right. Number two. Number two is a fill in the blank. Writing, acting, and performing music allows me to Pay the bills. Pay the bills. Three more words, man. I'm digging it. I'm digging it. All right. Okay. Question number three to top us off at three for the road, Tommy. You, you get a way to relax for one week on a remote island with no technology. So name three non-techie things that you would bring with you. Um, a rubber band to work out with mm -hmm. uh, uh, your supply of kombucha <laughs> i hear you right on <laughs> okay i'm digging it and uh god some kind of music gotcha i yeah, I, I, I guess a, a, a guitar i guess okay a, a guitar yeah, nice. I, I would, uh, oh, it, ha it has to be a, a Martin, a 1945 or 1950 Martin. Mm. Yeah, I, I, I'm not very familiar with guitars, but it sounds like it's uh, it's one of the fine ones. Well, it's the one uh, Joni Mitchell plays all the time. Oh, is it? Okay. And nice. it's uh, Hank Snow, the singing ranger. He was a, uh, he was a, uh, he always picked uh, his solos when he sang. But yeah. the, the reason I need a Martin is because as I get older, these mm -hmm. the, the guitars I got, they're harder to play. You know, I don't have the strength that I used to have. Right. And so right. the Martin, the Martin's real easy on the fingers. Yeah. And it's got a nice crisp sound. But uh, yeah, that, that, that yeah, the, uh, I have to have a guitar. Yeah, <laughs> the guitar, man. It's got to be yeah. a guitar. Yeah. <laughs> man, that's awesome. Uh, I tell you, Tommy, man, you've knocked these out of the park. Three for the road. Thank you for uh, participating in those questions. And, you know, I'm just curious. I just have one more question. It's not a five word or less thing. But, um, you know, from the, the Tommy Chong of the Vancouver's to the Tommy Chong of stand-up and comedy 
and a club owner to the Tommy Chong of still smoking, uh, nice dreams, uh, to the Tommy Chong of today. In all those chapters, okay, all those phases throughout your journey, um, what is one key element that you have learned about yourself? That God really likes me. God really likes you. Right on. Yeah. Right on, man. And when people say, why would you say that? I say, have you seen my wife? <laughs> then you'll know why. <laughs> uh, no, that's what I did learn. God God really likes me. He does. I can do it. He, he takes care of me all the time. Yeah. I talk to him all the time. Oh, or yeah. her. Hmm. I'm not sure which it is, but. I talked to her, and, and, and again, you know, like, I, I as I get older, I, I, I have a habit of losing shit, you know, and yeah, forgetting yeah. stuff, and so God's my, God's my uh, answer, answer machine, mm-hmm. when I, when I lose my phone, I say, okay, God, where, where, where's my phone, <laughs> God, and then it, it appears, it, it always appears, <laughs> nice, man, hey, it's he's crazy. the light, he's the way, <laughs> yeah, he is, yeah, yeah. And 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 I've been writing poetry, and 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 in one poem, uh, I, I I realized that God is just one thought away. That's how yeah. close He is. Yes, He's yeah. closer than breathing. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Closer, closer. Yeah. And and uh, and I, I and I know how how to get there. Mm-hmm. It, it's it's a challenge because yeah. you know, it's all been written in you know in the holy books right right but it but but the challenge is is to have no bad feelings against anybody that's right at all times yes not just once in a while but at all times that's a big challenge oh oh yeah. it is a lot is. a lot of conflict going on in this world you know oh, it's so a much big challenge. Yeah. But if you can but if you can rid yourself of bad feelings uh, to anything. Yeah. To anything because everything mm-hmm. has a, a purpose. And sometimes sure. that purpose is to wake you up or piss you off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One or the other, right? Yeah. 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 No. And well, then but mm-hmm. but instead of resenting, appreciate yeah. that's it oh and then the the last thing that i, I want to say is that mm-hmm. i've been uh, texting about vaccination about people should get vaccinated yes and the reason and and i and i, I point out, out a few things i said you know when the vaccination vaccinations first came out the first people to get them were wealthy people because yeah. they paid for them mm, and right, they right. paid big money for them because they got big money now why would they pay for something that in a little while would be free was because it's, it wasn't, a, they weren't worried about the, the, the cost. Right. They were worried about the effect. Oh, See? okay. See, they know. And I tell people, I said, the vaccination for old people is like a life insurance policy. Yeah. You yeah. know, yeah, it, it may is. not work, but why take a chance? Why take a chance? <laughs> you know? That's right. Why That's take right. a chance? And so I yeah. tell everybody out there, you know, that please, you know, get vaccinated. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, I agree. And for no other reason, God wants you to. Yes. He sure <laughs> because, does. See, see, God's doing his work now. God is fixing yeah. the planet. But God is in the middle of, of, of doing some redos with the planet, yeah. you yeah. know, because the humans kind of fucked it up. Yeah, so, <laughs> that's so, right. So, so in order to get these these humans to sit down and be quiet for a minute, yeah, you give them a pandemic that keep their ass in the house. Yeah, and, and then, and then you know the, the the earth will heal itself. You know, right. it will it will it, because that's earth. That's that's the nature of earth will heal itself. It'll mm-hmm. take time. Yeah, you know, but we can't keep fucking with it. You know. No. And that's why the oil uh, companies, uh, you know, they have to be a thing of the past. Mm-hmm. And, oh, I've been watching uh, uh, World War II movie, uh, uh, battles. Uh, oh, have on, you? Uh, on Tubi? Tu- 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 
and it's yeah, uh, me. it's called uh, Battleground. Oh, it's really? a battleground, and yeah, they're yeah. all the all the classic war uh, fights that we had. Yeah. And what I learned, man, I, what I learned in uh, in Shanghai, the reason we uh, the British lost Shanghai, yeah, <laughs> they, they had nothing but white guys fighting <laughs> the war in the army. They're all yeah. white guys, uh -huh. and and this is this is a brown nation. This is a brown country, like Vietnam, you know. Yeah, uh, yeah, you yeah. know, and they never. The, the British never used any locals in the oh in, to tell them the the, the terrain or anything. And right, so what right. they did, they had all their big warships, battleships, big cannons pointed out to sea, expecting yeah. the Japanese armada to come invading <laughs> them. But instead, the Japanese snuck around to the back and they mm. rode bicycles to, to get up to the to the to where the English were. And yeah. they, they captured the English without basically without a fight because oh they had no gosh. defense. And, and they the didn't Japanese know the land. Just they just walked in and they took them all prisoners and oh then they gosh. tortured the shit out of them and killed <laughs> a lot of them, and, you know? But, Man. but check it out. Check out that thing. I will. It's, it's on Tubi, right? You learn so much about history and why okay. they were fighting. And you know why they were fighting? For oil. Oil. For oil. Natural because in resources. order to keep the yeah. in order to keep the war machine going, you need yeah. fuel, and right. at that that time the fuel was uh, uh, gasoline and oil, right? And right. so so armies would advance like like uh, Hitler's armies, you know, tanks, blah, 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 and then they run out of shit, uh, run out of oil, the gas, yeah, yeah. and so they'd stop, and then they'd get replenished. So so the wars were all about, and then bombing uh, oil fields. Like they bombed Amazing. the oil supply was in Romania. Check it out, man! It's so really? interesting. Yeah, yeah it's so I, interesting. I will. I and, will. and you know, when, when the German when the Germans uh, invaded uh, uh, Poland, yeah. you know, the news acts like, oh, the Germans just invaded Poland and they just walked through because they had superior blah blah blah, you know. And the yeah. Polish, the Polish were some. Badass motherfuckers, man. <laughs> Badass. Yeah. No, they were on horses. Most of right. them were on horses. And yeah. they had small arms. They never had cannons and tanks and right. shit. But yeah. they were warriors, man. And really? they were kick ass. War yeah, you know, riders. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> With yeah, a horse yeah. And, yeah. and a sword. And no, they that's were badass. badass. Yeah. And and they they ended up to check it out. This is a lot of fun. Okay. I will. I will. Tommy. Thank you so much, man. Really, really appreciate having you on, uh, you know, and, uh, and, and, and best of luck, best of continued success, sir. And, uh, and, and thanks again for coming on the show, man. You keep playing that jazz, man. I want to hear you guys. Oh yeah, no, I'll play, yeah. I'll play some, man. No, I still yeah, got yeah, yeah, my two yeah, yeah, I want to, want to hear you guys. I'm going to, yeah. I'm going to start doing the same thing with when I get the right guitar. I don't have the right guitar yet. Okay. Okay. Yeah. No. Yeah, people. Yeah. People always talk about what's your favorite string. Fuck the string. I need my favorite guitar. Man. You made your favorite guitar. <laughs> yeah, I got it. Take care, bro. All right. You do the same. Thanks a lot. The Road to Rediscovery is an AJ Shark production.